Um, let's see. For, for the last few weeks now, we have been covering prayer um, in the church and um, what prayer and what prayer means to discipleship as a Christ follower. And um, I, I know for me, it, really what the last few weeks hasn't, we haven't really even scratched a surface on prayer or anything. It's just been a, a really quick um, covering of what, pr- what a prayer life can be, what it could look like to everybody, um, and just a few ways to maybe reignite our prayer life and whatnot. And prayer itself is such a, a simple, simple task. And what it, the basic of it is, it's a, a real way to stay in constant communion with God and, and keep him at the forefront of our mind. Um, it's a way, another way to bring ourselves before him and lay ourselves at our feet. And it's another way to release ourselves, our worries, hand over praise and joy um, over to him, you know? And it's, it, for me, it's a very good um, practice to be in. But also, I want to stay, state that prayer can be confusing as well. Um, it can be complicated, and it can feel very lonely at times. And I say that because we are human, and we expect a lot as humans, right? We are very self-centered, <clears throat> and we have that self-centered nature about us, and we want to be in control, and we want to be able to control the things that are happening around us. And... Um, or worse, we only we want to um, have the only say in things that are happening in our lives, and we want our demands to be met right now. We are very impatient as people, right? Right. But prayer is special. Prayer is very special. It's an integral part, or it should be an integral part of our relationship with Jesus Christ and not just some supplemental part that we do when we need something, right? When we get in this this time of of desperation, it should be an an integral part. It should be a part of your daily life. I admit that there are times in my life that uh, my prayer life just absolutely stinks and I don't have the capacity for prayer and I get emotionally worn out and I just don't want to. I get frustrated in life. Um, I get overwhelmed. And so my natural instinct is to hermit, to recluse, to go and just be by myself and I don't want to do anything. And when I notice myself doing something along that nature, there are two options that I face and I see most people facing, right? Two options is we can continue down that behavior of reclusing or or being uh, by ourselves and just shutting everybody out, or the second part is that we can release ourselves over to Christ. And I go to somebody, myself, I go to somebody, and I let them know that I'm struggling in my relationship with Christ, that I'm struggling in seeking Christ in my everyday life. I'm telling them, like, hey, my, my prayer time sucks, my journaling, I'm not doing it, I'm not in my Bible, I'm not worshiping, I'm not meditating. And they usually, they're always like, well, why aren't you doing it? And they're holding me accountable to those. But then there are other times where I'm super plugged in, right? There are other times that I've seen other people very plugged in into the Word. They're in there multiple times a day. They're listening to worship music nonstop. They're listening to podcasts on theology, just trying to, trying, to, trying to make that effort to grow closer and closer to God. And that's what we have to do. We have to draw nearer to God, to Him, because when we say, I feel distance from God. It's not that God has removed himself from our lives. It's that we've removed him, right? We've removed him. We've pushed him away. 
It's not him. He's there. We have to shift our priorities in life. The scripture that we're going to cover today um, can and oftentimes is used out of context a lot. Um, it's normally used as prosperity gospel, um, and I'm not a big fan of that, if you all know that. Um, and so we have to, when we read the scripture, we have to understand um, to them the way it was supposed to be understood, right? And, we can, and then once we understand the original context of the story of the scripture that we'll be covering, we can uh, then apply it to our lives. So John 14 uh, says in verses 13 and 14, I will do uh, whatever you ask in my name. Did it come up? I apologize. <laughs> That's not great. Something always happens. We need music during this time. Where's my back my background bass player, you know? <laughs> Man, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, I know. Boo. Well, it may come up. I don't know. Anywho, yep, so John 14, 13, uh, 13 through 14 says, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. What Jesus is doing here, he's providing this qualifier to, to prayer, right? He says that request must be made in my name. And what it is doing, it's implying that if we're acting, that when we do that, we're acting to accordingly to the will and authority of somebody else, right? Jesus is not saying, I will give you anything that you ask for. Again, I would be a multimillionaire at this point in my life if that was the case. And I'm sure everybody else would too. And he doesn't say, as long as you include these magic words, right, in Jesus' name, and I will grant all of your requests. He's not this genie, right? Jesus promised, he says, he will do anything that is asked in my name. And what that is implying is that it is something, you're asking something that is consistent with the will and the nature of Christ. Does that make sense? Meaning that when we request something of God, right, it has to be in the, in the will and the nature of God. The purpose for this promise of saying, hey, I will give you whatever you ask for in my name is to glorify God, not to glorify us. That's where a lot of us get confused at, right? Our requests aren't meant to dishonor or defy God's will. Christ's promise is to meet our needs and to grant requests that are legitimately in his name. That's all there is to it. That doesn't mean that we, that we get to go and redefine what God wants, right? We don't make his will be our, like, we don't make our will be his will, okay? If we want something, we don't get to rewrite the narrative of God's will on our life. But then if we move on to verse 15, it says, right after verse 14, it says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Jesus, in this statement, in that verse, says that if... Um, there's a critical part of that, and it says those who love God obey God, right? So if we, if we love God and we obey God and we're going to him with selfish request, there's probably not much obeying or loving of God in that nature, right? Now, that can get tough at times, right? Especially when we see death around us. Um, there were a lot of people praying last week for Mary Joy Mosman, and unfortunately, 
that was not God's will, at the, you know, and we, uh, we struggle in that. When people die that are around us, we don't understand what is happening, right? I couldn't imagine being the mom in that situation, right? It doesn't mean that God does not listen. It just means that that was not God's will. And, and that's hard to accept. I get that. But a lot of times when we go to God, we have a lot of selfishness. I've talked to the mom and whatnot, and she has such a great spirit about her. And she understands the, um, the implications of, of, her, you know, of life. And she's satisfied with what God has given her. She walks around with a big smile on her face. It's, it's lovely, right? But not all of us have that. If we are seeking God and we're presenting requests before God, and there's a, there's a humbleness to us, right? Jesus is giving us this broad invitation in these moments to pray and to ask requests in his name. In his name, not in our name. That's what we get confused with a lot of the times. That phrase, in Jesus' name, um, is not some magical phrase. It's not some incantation that we can just insert at the close of prayer and go about our daily lives and say, oh, well, I said in Jesus' name, so it's going to happen. It doesn't work like that. And praying in Jesus' name is praying with his authority. Praying in Jesus' name is asking God the Father to act upon our prayers, right? Because we are coming to him in those moments in the name of his son, Jesus, but we're, we're praying in Jesus' name according to the nature and the character and the will of God, not ourselves. Praying in Jesus' name is not this required thing that we do at the end of prayer. It's a way of praying things that will honor, praying for things that will honor and glorify Jesus and God the Father. The reality is that God does not say to everyone, uh, say yes to every one of our prayers, right? Who's had every single prayer in their life answered? Okay, that's what I thought, right? Obviously, some of our prayers can be super selfish. Can we admit that? Yes. All right. We have to realign prayers. A component to prayer, our prayer life, is persevering in prayer. Continually seeking. Matthew 7, 7, uh, 7, 7 through 8 says, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks, and the one who knocks, it will be opened. Jesus was here reassuring his disciples that God welcomes prayer and urged them to continually, um, to continually come to him um, and, and be persistent in that. And that's what we are supposed to be doing. What Jesus is saying in Matthew 7, verses 7 through 8, is that you have to be consistent. It's a buildup. That whole phrasing is a buildup, right? It's, so it says, ask. So you're just like kind of toying with the idea, right? Kind of toying with the idea. The next one is keep seeking. You're seeking God's will in that, in your ask. Is this my will or is this God's will? We're going to continue seeking it, right? And then once we realize that, man, maybe this is God's will for my life, we're, we're going to knock. It's a deeper conversation. It's a deeper commitment, right? A deeper communion with God in those moments, we are to ask. We are to seek in, in God's will. We are to knock. We want to develop a deeper, more meaningful relationship through Christ. And we have to have confidence in that. We have to have confidence in our relationship with him. If we are to go in front of Jesus, lay ourselves at his feet and plead in prayer, right, we have to 
be ready to persevere in prayer. Again, if we're just going and expecting immediacy in those moments, chances are it's not going to happen. Most of our prayers, if we're seeking God's will, right? If we're seeking God's nature in our prayers, they're going to be answered over time. That's all there is to it. And we can get a good example of that in Luke 18. Uh, we don't have scripture for that, obviously. Um, <laughs> But what it is, it's, it's the prayer of the persistent widow, right? They have a judge, and he doesn't seek God's will. He doesn't respect the people. But what this parable is telling us, Jesus gives us in this uh, parable, is that it's to help us the, understand the importance of continued prayer and how it is used to build our faith. Continued prayer, persistent prayer, is there to help strengthen us, strengthen our faith, so that, so that when we don't get answers in our prayer life, our, our faith won't go to the wayside, right? It's not going to be wavering. Oh, well, God didn't answer this prayer for me, so oh, I don't understand why he doesn't listen. Well, that's selfishness in that statement alone, Right? We have to be consistent. We have to be, remain faithful in our prayer and build that perseverance. And the reality of prayer is that there is no set answer or formula as to why many of our prayers go unanswered. Besides, all I can say is if your prayer goes unanswered, that it's not in the will of God. It's not God's sovereignty to happen in those moments. But there are a few scriptural references that we can look at as to why prayers, um, why our prayers, yes, um, and, and if we're not aligned to God, why they may go unanswered, and why we need to uh, persevere in prayer. And the first one that I can look at is in Daniel 10, um, so my, my note on this says demonic opposition. So if I'm looking at some ways that are hindrances to um, our prayer, it's by demonic opposition. So Daniel 10, um, I'll read a little bit of it here, but in, in Daniel, Daniel was in this uh, three-week season of prayer, pray, praying and fasting to gain understanding from God in a manner, in a matter when, uh, when he was visited on the 21st day by an angel. Um, the angel tells Daniel that, he says, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and uh, and humbled yourself before God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the prince of Persia. That's verses 12 through 13 in Daniel 10. So the, the angel comes in and he informs Daniel that his prayers from day one have been heard by God. And yet there is this demonic spirit that was um, over the kingdom of Persia, right? He, this demonic spirit uh, resisted and fought against the angel of the Lord for three weeks, Right? He's fighting against this angel for three weeks, even though that Daniel's prayers are being uh, heard. And so that, is, that delays Daniel's uh, prayers to be answered. So when we, are when we are to continue in prayer, right, persevere in prayer, we can look at the book of Ephesians and say, this is how we are to um, specifically go to war in spiritual warfare, right? If we are facing a satanic or a demonic opposition, and that's in uh, Ephesians 6, 11 through 12, 
And it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the, de- uh, of the devil. For we do not wrestle against uh, flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, uh, against the spiritual forces of evil in this heavenly place. You guys get that? Believers today may have a hard time and may wonder if their answers are being heard or not because they do not get immediate answers in prayer. And we, not, and we shouldn't be discouraged in those moments. We shouldn't stop praying in those moments. Again, we can look at Daniel and say, God hears the prayers of humbled believers. Uh, and he answers them at his right time and not our right time. And we have to be okay with that. Um, in Hebrews uh, uh, chapter 4, it, it's an encouragement for believers to draw near to God's throne of grace, to find mercy and grace in the time of need. Jesus encouraged, had encouraged his disciples at that time, you know, to continue to pray, to just be disciples of prayer. And as we talk about discipleship this whole year, because that's our focus for the year is becoming, you know, disciples of Christ, being uh, apprentice to Christ, we have to implement prayer in our life. We have to be consistent in our prayer. So when Jesus says, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you'll find, knock and it will be uh, open to you, it's an invitation for us to maybe reignite our prayer life, right? It's an invitation to us to continue to go down into a deeper prayer life, a persistent prayer life. The second uh, thing we may face if, we're, if our prayers are not being answered is um, resistance of our own flesh, you know, our own desires, our own, um, our own will for God, right? God does not come into our lives and just override our will so that our prayers, his prayers will be answered, right? Has God ever come in in your life and is like, hey, you know, he, does he take away your will? No, he'll most likely let you fail and, and hit the ground and you'll get up bloody and that's about it, right? And you guys can continue down that path and, and whatnot. God rare, rarely forces a person to do something that, that we don't want to do. If that was the case, I think the world would look a little differently. The kingdom of God is not ruled by some dictator, right? We do have opposition in this world, right? Satan is the one who manipulates and he deceives people. And the, the really curious thing to me is that a lot of times, even in my own head, Satan's voice feels a lot like God's because of the shiny things that are presented to me in those moments, right? Oh, maybe I do want that, right? Maybe I do want to continue with this uh, bad behavior, right? Maybe I do want to go more and further and further into debt, whatever that looks like, right? Because I have to have the next greatest thing. But that's not the case. God's nature is to influence us by drawing us into him, inviting us into him, right? And we are so resistant at times to the work and the will of God. Stephen, um, in the book of Acts, we covered uh, a few weeks ago, and that was in Acts 7, when he was being stoned um, by, by the crowd, right? He, he declared in his speech, 
Um, he called them a, a stiff-necked people. He, he told them that they were uncircumcised in their hearts and their, in, in their ears and that, that they always re will resist the Holy Spirit as, you, as your fathers did, uh, so you do also. That's what he tells them. And um, sometimes that needs to be said to people around us, <laughs> Right? Because they continue down the paths, right? Um, he's just calling them out. He's hold them, holding them accountable to what they're doing. If we were to persevere in prayer for God's influence um, in people's lives around us, we ourselves have to emulate God's, God's will in our lives. We have to be consistent in prayer, right? We're not going to force feed somebody in that sense, we have to be the example as Christ was the example for us. So as we close here today, um, Jesus' point to all of this is that God is listening to our prayers. He's paying attention to his people, and he's ready to give good gifts, okay? Okay. And that has a remarkable truth behind it. God wants the best for all of us. He really, truly does. The God of all creation, right, cares so deeply about his children, all of us here, all of us throughout the world, that he hears them when they pray continually, right? He always hears prayer. And even better than listening to those prayers, he answers prayers. And that's what is so, so remarkable about that. This is also um, when this also speaks to when we have doubts about God, when we have doubts or we question our faith, right? We are to, when we lack faith, we are to continue the fight. We are to continue to pursue truth. And when we find it, we will find Jesus at the center of it. And since God is listening, right, and loving, Jesus tells his listeners to what? To ask, to seek, and to knock. And when you ask, it will be given. And when you seek, you will find. And when you knock, the proper door will be opened. Not the door that you always want, right? But it's the proper door. The proper door. Jesus commands his followers to bring their request, to look for answers, and to, to let your, your request be known to God. We have to be in God's presence. And instead of putting uh, limits and conditions on these promises. Jesus is um, is even more expansive than that. He just says, "Come in my name." Right? Represent your request in my name. Jesus will continue to clarify um, promises in our lives. He will continue to offer means to us. Our means have to be what God wants in our lives. Prayer is never presented in Scripture as a, a means to just get our way. But it's a, it's a means to seek God, right? It's a means to have God's will be present in our life. It's a means to persevere, it's a means to draw us closer and to lay ourselves at God's feet, asking for grace and mercy when we need it the most. So my, my challenge to everybody here this week is that, um, that as you go and, and seek God this week, as you continue to pray or start your prayer life, start small, keep asking God, just ask, right? And then seek and then knock. Because if we continue in those prayers, if we continue to seek God's will for our lives, our prayers are going to be redefined in moments. And to allow God's will to come through 
and to come to fruition at his time. If you guys will stand up and worship with us.